Hey guys, Miss Marusik here, and in this video we're going to be talking about formal charge. Now, assigning formal charge is a method that we can use to figure out the best possible structure for a molecule when we're given multiple structures to select from. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than resonance structures. Uh, with resonance structures, all of the possibilities have equal energy. Here, we're going to be presented with distinctly different structures that have unequal energy. And so what we're trying to do is we are trying to pick the best option from those, the most energetically stable of those options. Um, so the most likely structure is one where formal charges have been best distributed. Now, to get the best distribution, we either want formal charges to be as close to zero as possible, or if there is an element that has to have a remaining formal charge, we want that remaining formal charge on the most electronegative atom. Now, what this means is that basically we're going to have to calculate this formal charge for every single atom within our compound and then kind of evaluate all of the data that we're presented with that we calculated to pick the best structure. And so we need a formula in order to calculate this formal charge for each of my elements. Um, so the formula is the number of valence electrons that it has normally as a free neutral atom, which basically is how many electrons it brings according to the periodic table. How many valence electrons does it have as an atom. And then we're going to subtract off how many electrons are assigned to the atom in the molecule. It's basically how many electrons can it claim. Now we have to be careful here with the claiming for formal charge because what happens is that if we have a bond that two elements are sharing, that bond gets split between the two. So we'll kind of practice with that in a little bit. Now this is one method that I could write the formula in. I like to use this bring minus claim because that way it's just kind of a shorthand method of me remembering what this formula is. Um, but some books will uh, show the formal charge with this uh, formula here, the number of valence electrons it has normally. So as I said, how many it's bringing from the periodic table um, and subtracting the non-bonded electrons and half of the bonded electrons. So again, that bond gets split equally amongst the two atoms between what it's being shared. Um, so to kind of see this in action, we're going to go ahead and jump into one of these. Um, now keep in mind, we don't normally have to calculate formal charge to pick a best structure. Like if you're drawing a Lewis dot structure, you're just going to use all of the normal tools that you have for constructing that Lewis dot structure, all the normal rules and everything that we're used to processing through. We only have to double check a structure with formal charge when we're specifically asked to do so. So don't panic about having to do this on every single structure you ever draw. You will not have to. This is kind of a once in a blue moon will you be asked to do this situation. So what I have on this example here are three possible scenarios for the structure of the thiocyanate ion SCN negative one. And so what we want to do is after we assign formal charges from that data, we want to pick which of these structures would be the best. So let me first kind of roll through how the formula works for formal charge. And I'm going to start off here with the sulfur. Now remember the formula that I like to use is the idea of bring minus claim. Okay. The bring for sulfur is according to the periodic table, how many valence electrons does it contribute? Well, for the sulfur, because it's in group 16, I know that group 16 brings with it six valence electrons. Now I'm going to subtract from that how many it can claim. However, we have to be careful here. I, I know there's four total shared electrons here in this double bond, but that double bond is going to get kind of split. So two are going to get claimed by the sulfur and two are going to get claimed by the carbon, even though in reality they're really sharing all of those. So what that means is that this sulfur is claiming one, two, three, four, so those that it has around it, plus half of these bonds, so five, six. So bring minus claim means that that sulfur is going to have a formal charge of zero. All right, next, I'm going to do this for the carbon. I know carbon on the periodic table is in group 14, and so therefore it'll have four valence electrons that it brings with it. 
and then I'm going to subtract off how many it can claim. Now, it doesn't have any unshared electrons to count up, but we do get to claim half of this bond, so that's one, two, and I get to claim half of this bond over here, three, four. So again, four minus four is zero, and you're like thinking, okay, this is looking kind of boring so far. Don't worry, we're about to get to one that has a formal charge, okay? So let's talk about nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group 15. So I know being in group 15, it has five valence electrons to it that it brings. And I see it claims these one, two, three, four unshared, but also half of these bonds here. So five, six. Five minus six would be a formal charge of negative one. So that means I have formal charges of zero on the sulfur, zero on the carbon, and negative one on the nitrogen. By the way, I want to point something out. Notice that the formal charges all tally up zero and zero and negative one to the overall negative one charge on that thiocyanate ion. So we should see that all of those formal charges do tally up to the overall charge. All right, let's go ahead and do the next one here. Uh, again, I have sulfur. I know sulfur brings six electrons with it. Let's count up how many it claims. It's going to claim half of these in the bond and as well as these two unshared electrons out here. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Six minus five would be a formal charge of positive one. Okay, next I'm gonna do the carbon. I know carbon brings four with it. So then I'm gonna subtract off how many it's claiming here. It claims half of these bonds, so one, two, three, and half of this bond over here. So again, our carbon will have a formal charge of zero on this one. Our nitrogen, as we said a minute ago, it's in group 15, so it brings five valence electrons, minus how many it's claiming. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus one from here, so that's seven. So that gives us a formal charge of negative two. So again, the positive one and the negative two with the zero would tally up to negative one. All right, we got one more down here at the end. So again, my sulfur. I know it brings six. Let's see how many it claims in this structure. One, two, three, four, five, six, half of the bond, seven. So that would be a formal charge of negative one. Our carbon, as we know, brings four. Let's see how many it claims here. I've got half of the bond, so there's one, and half of these bonds, so two, three, four. So that would be a formal charge of zero. And then finally, our nitrogen, I know it has five valence electrons it brings. Let's see how many it's claiming. One, two, three, four, five. So five minus five would be zero. And yet again, all my formal charges tally up to the overall negative one charge that we see on the polyatomic ion. So now here's what we want to do. We want to pick which of these is the best structure out of these options. And to do that, the first thing we want to do is pick one where the formal charges are the most reduced. Well, this one had zero, zero, negative one. This one had zero, zero, negative one. So that, that's looking pretty good for being reduced. But this one had positive one, zero, negative two. Those had some formal charges that were starting to get away from a value of zero. And so therefore, I'm going to rule out this one. I know it can't be this one. And that is because the formal charges are not minimized. Okay. So now I've narrowed this down to the two where the formal charges are minimized. And so if you remember back up here, not only do we want the formal charges close to zero, we want them minimized, but we also want to have any remaining negative formal charge on the most electronegative atom. So you notice on this first structure here, our formal charge of negative one remained on the nitrogen, whereas here it remained on the sulfur. So I'm going to go and I'm going to see which of those two I would predict to be most electronegative. Well, I see that sulfur is two away from fluorine, um, but so is the nitrogen. And so really, I would have to check this against an electronegativity chart. So they would probably have given you electronegativity values for this one. Um, so you could have better made this prediction. I will tell you this. Um, nitrogen is more electronegative 
than the sulfur, partly because it's in that top period, um, and so I have less occupied energy levels. So if we had to predict, that would be a pretty good bet that it would be more electronegative. But again, we could confirm that with actually having some electronegativity values. So nitrogen being more electronegative means that this is our better option versus this one because, again, our negative... formal charge is on the highest electronegative element, which is most ideal. All right, here's what I want you all to do. We've got three structures on this next example that are all possibilities for CCL2O. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause this video and see if you can assign formal charges on each of the elements in these compounds with that whole bring minus claimed idea, and then see if you can pick out the best structure from these. So go ahead, pause the video, and go try it out. Go see if you can assign those formal charges. All right, did you pause the video? Did you try it out? I hope you tried it out, because we really want to make sure we know how to do this, right? All right, so here's what I put for my answers for my formal charges, okay? So on this first option for CCL2O, um, the oxygen was a zero, the chlorine should have been positive three, the chlorine here is zero, and the carbon here is negative three. On this structure here, the carbon is negative two, the oxygen is positive two, and both of the chlorines are zero. Here, oxygen is zero, carbon is zero, and both of our chlorines are zero. So the best structure has the formal charges closest to zero. They have the formal charges minimized for their values. So here on this one, this last structure would be the best option for CCL20. Now notice something. Um, even though all three of these were organized very differently, Notice that they all still had the same general structure to them. They all would have been a trigonal planar structure to them, regardless of the way I was doing this. So the good news is, is that addressing formal charge doesn't change the polarity, doesn't change it from being polar or nonpolar, and it also doesn't change the molecular geometry of the structure. It is trigonal planar in all three of these options. Or this one up above was linear for all three of those options. And all of them would have been polar regardless of what was happening with formal charge. So we don't have to assign formal charge unless we are specifically asked to in a question because we should still be able to get the correct uh, polarity and molecular geometry even without taking that extra step. Now we're gonna look at one more example on the next page. And this actually goes a little bit beyond what you would have probably had to do on any kind of AP question, um, but it's a good one to kind of uh, see how formal charge can really impact a structure and make it do some things that you might not have necessarily predicted. Um, so here what I've done is I have drawn a predicted structure for the phosphate polyatomic ion, PO4-3. negative I did my tally up of electrons here, and I went and set up my PO4-3. negative Okay, um, and so if I was predicting what this structure would look like, this would be a pretty good guess. Okay, and this is what I would expect to see if you were asked to draw a Lewis dot structure of it. However, let's go see if formal charges are minimized. I can see here that I know oxygen brings with it six, but each of these oxygens have claim to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So by that token, the bring of six minus seven that it's claiming would give each of these oxygens a negative one formal charge. Our phosphorus in the middle brings five, it's in group 15, yet it only has claim here to four. So five minus four would give me a positive one. So I can see that I have some remaining formal charge here which isn't totally minimized. So if you actually go look up the actual structure of this molecule, it actually doesn't look like this. What they will do is leave three of these exactly the same 
but actually create a resonance situation on this last oxygen here. It'll steal one of these unshared electron pairs, put a double bond here with the oxygen, and then look. let's look and see what that does to my formal charge. Um, as we said, phosphorus would bring five. Well, now it has claim to five, and so that would give it a formal charge of zero, whereas this oxygen here brings six, and look, it has claim to one, two, three, four, five, six now, so it too has a formal charge of zero. All the rest of them are still negative one like they were before, but look how we have reduced the formal charge on this by creating an expanded octet on that phosphorus in the middle. Um, so if you ever look up a polyatomic ion Lewis dot structure and you notice um, that they made an expanded octet on it, even though you really wouldn't have predicted that, um, it's because of formal charge. It's funny, in pre-EP, I can always tell when people copy their polyatomic ions, their Lewis dot structures off of the internet of phosphate, sulfate, chlorate, because all of those end up having a double bond that you wouldn't expect. So when they bring those structures to me, when they bring this to me in pre-P, I'm like, oh, so you know about formal charge? And they're like, what are you, what are you talking about formal charge? I'm like, yeah, because that ain't the predicted structure. Predicted is this. To be able to draw this, you need to know something about formal charge. So hopefully we're feeling a little more confident with formal charge. Again, doing something like this is not really something you would have to do. Um, what you would be more asked to do is something like we did on the previous page, where you're assigning those formal charges and having to pick the best structure. So if you weren't 100% on what we did on that last page, don't panic. You're going to be asked more to do something like we saw here. Um, so hopefully you're feeling more confident. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.